I saw a video on the Small Thoughts YouTube channel recently talking about emulating PS1 on the 3DS and decided to give it a try. I never had a PS1 grown up or really ever. There's a couple of games on PS1 that I've always wanted to play and I decided why not try them out on the 3DS. It's a great console, great handheld. I was able to get a PS1 emulator set up on my 3DS. You can have the BIOS, you know, boot screen show up if you want. And also you can use frame borders. So I've got this PlayStation themed one since it's not gonna be a native screen size. But I've always wanted to play the PS1 game, Police Knots. Uh, the fan translation came out for it a while ago and I never got around to actually playing through all of it. Initially sound was like glitchy or stuttery and frame rates weren't very smooth, particularly on like pre-rendered cutscenes. I noticed and just kind of overall gameplay was, I'm the kind of person who, if I'm gonna emulate a console, I essentially want it to be emulated perfectly, like, or else I just won't do it. And I actually find the controls work qu quite well, especially on some of the earlier PS1 games. I mean, a lot of PlayStation games didn't even use the dual analog sticks. <laughs> games we'll need to prepare them. After we've created backups for each game, well, each disc we want to play, we'll use a tool called CHD Man to convert it from a bin plus Q format to a CHD format. The CHD format is created by the main project to compress hunks of data in hard drive images or disc images. And the result of this will be a smaller file size as well as it will run better in our emulator in RetroArch. The other thing we're going to do is create a .m3u playlist file for easier disk swapping. So the first step is assuming we have our game backed up, I'm actually just going to go into this folder and you can see I have two folders with one disk in each one and each one contains a bin plus Q file. I'll right click on the folder and I'll go services, new terminal at folder. Now that we have our terminal open, we'll need to install the CHD man tool. On macOS, you can do that using the homebrew package manager. And the command is this, brew install rom dash tools. This will install a, ver a variety of different main tools for working with ROMs, but the only one we need is CHD man. I've already done it. So you can see it says it's already installed. So to verify that, I'll just do CHD man like that. And you can see we get an output. If we didn't have CHD man installed, let's call it Chad man, we'd get an error like command not found. So the command structure for CHD man is just CHD man create CD dash I and then the Q file. So Valkyrie profile USA disk one dot Q. And I'm using tab to complete the file name, which is very handy. And then I'll go out and dash O, and I'm gonna wrap this in quotes. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. I'll name mine Valkyrie Profile, and I'll put disk one in quote in parentheses. And don't forget your file extension. So I'll go ahead and run that. And this is actually using like technology similar to zip files and 7-zip and different kind of uh, lossless compression formats uh, to compress the game. Now that it's complete, you can see our final ratio is 62.5%. So now that that's compressed, just to check it out even further, I'll run this command, which will show the file sizes. So we can see that we started with a bin file that was 697 megabytes and it compressed it down to 453. So not a ton, but I mean, hey, these SD cards take forever to transfer, so why not? I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other game. You can open the folder in terminal how I showed you with right clicking, or you can just go with using CD. I'll go dot dot slash, and then we wanna go into disk two. <laughs> All right, same situation, chd man create cd dash i, I wanna give it our q file dash o, wrap it in quotes, val cree profile disk two dot chd. It's kind of fun to watch things go in the terminal. <laughs> 
same thing. Let's check out how big the files are. So we originally had a 713 megabyte file. Now we have a 462 megabyte file. So again, not bad. Now that we have both of our games converted to CHD, we can see here in the folder, we have a CHD folder file and our two original files. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'll move these two CHD files up to just the parent directory. So what we should have now is a folder with the name of your game with two files in it that are the CHD files for your game. Uh, and then these original folders, which I'll actually remove. You don't have to organize it this way. This is just how I like to do it. The only other thing that we're gonna do is create a playlist file, which will make it easier for us to swap disks while we're playing. So I'll actually open up this folder in terminal again. And the command for doing this is actually on the website. So I'll copy that. And here we are in our folder. You can see we have our two CHD files. I'll paste this in and it should just run immediately. You can see that it created this .m3u file. This is a playlist file. And just to make sure, I'm going to inspect it. All it is is two lines of text, which are our two files. And that's it in order, so you can do this manually if you want, but this makes it faster. We are done in the terminal, so you can hit Command Q to quit out of it. Keep your folder open. We'll need to download RetroArch for 3DS. You can use this link or navigate to the RetroArch website and download the latest 3DS version. I recommend using the stable version. It'll be more stable than the nightly. Go ahead and download this. Hello? Should go pretty quick. It's a... 100 megabyte file. Downloaded a 7-zip file, so I'll go ahead and extract that. And we're done with our file, so I'll go ahead and get rid of that. You can see we now have our RetroArch CIA file. This has a RetroArch folder and a CIA folder in it. We don't need the CIA folder. I don't know what this is, but we don't need it. We only need our RetroArch folder. Go into the RetroArch folder and into the cores folder. And you can see here, there's a bunch of CIA files. Uh, you can keep as many of these around as you want. These are all individual emulators. In our case, we only are looking at PlayStation. So I'll select them all, and then I'm gonna hold down the command key. I'm gonna leave this info folder. I'm not sure if that's exactly necessary. And then I'm going to leave PSX rearmed. And I'll move the rest of the trash. So now our chorus folder only has these two things in it. So now that we've removed any of our unneeded cores, we'll just download a couple of configuration files that'll make our lives easier. It took me a while to figure out what all of these did and how to apply them. Download my PCSX configuration and place it in RetroArch config PCSX rearmed. So RetroArch, we'll need to create the config folder. Inside of it, we'll need to create a PCSX-rearm and that is case sensitive. And then we'll save the .opt file here. Next, we'll download my RetroArch configuration and we'll place it in RetroArch. just inside of this folder here. Now that we have our files downloaded, this is roughly what the RetroArch directory should look like. And we're, the most important parts here are removing the extra cores, downloading the config, and then placing the PCSX rearmed config inside of this folder. That's really the most important thing. We'll now transfer over this RetroArch folder and our games to the 3DS. Remove the SD card from your 3DS and put it in your computer. In my case, it showed up here as no name and your directory structure should look pretty much like this if you have custom firmware installed. The first thing we'll do is copy over this entire RetroArch directory as we've modified it and set it up. So you can just go copy, paste, 
and put it on the root of your 3DS's micro SD card. Unfortunately, this does need to go on the root of the SD card, which just kind of makes it less aesthetically pleasing when you open it up, just to have RetroArch sitting in your face, especially just for one emulator, but I guess that's just the way it is. I couldn't figure out a way to make it cleaner. The thing about RetroArch is it's a suite of emulators. So they distribute like all these open source emulators in one package with one UI, which is pretty sweet. But like the thing is, is like, you kind of just want one good emulator. Like I don't ever want to install an Atari 2600 emulator, ever. I'm glad that they exist, but I just personally have no interest in playing a system like that. You know, there's like really five systems I'd ever really be interested in emulating. Anyways, thanks for, thankful for RetroArch, but I wish that the standalone distributions were better supported. Okay, so that's copied over. The next thing I'm gonna do is copy over my ROMs. So I'll just create another folder here in our base directory. ROMs, PS1. And then I can copy over Valkyrie profile. This is gonna take a while. <laughs> the other thing to copy over at this point is any BIOS backups that you have or maybe a friend shared with you. I have all three regions here. Uh, I don't know which one is which. I just backed up all of my consoles. So I will just actually stick them in the ROMs folder. So I just have my three BIOS files sitting here next to my ROMs. Go ahead and let this finish up. <laughs> okay, so that's all copied over to our micro SD card. So now we will eject the SD card, put it in our console and switch over to that. Now that we have everything transferred over, I'm gonna go ahead and open up FBI. Then I'll navigate, I'll just hit A, navigate on the SD card and go down into our RetroArch folder. We can go into our cores folder and we'll click on PCSX rearmed. We'll hit install CIA. Don't install and delete it. As far as I know, RetroArch needs the CIA to still be like on the device. <laughs> Should go by pretty quickly. Hit OK. Go back home. New software. PCSX Libret Libretro PlayStation Core. Go ahead and open it up. On first boot, it creates some additional directories and config files, so it takes a second, but just have a little bit of faith. Now, how to navigate uh, RetroArch if you haven't used it before. Uh, since we're only really interested in PS1, we can go directly to load content, SDMC, ROMs, PS1, Valkyrie, and then I'll actually load the .m3u file. Let's see if it's going to work. Moment of truth. <gasps> nice. And there you go. So yeah, at this point you should have a functional PS1 emulator on your 3DS. So audio seems fine. Seems to be running at full speed, although most PS1 games kind of feel like they're lagging even on the console. There's... Those seek times, the load times on the PS1 were pretty rough. On the bottom screen here, uh, you just have a couple of things. You can resume the game. If you touch it, it'll pause it. And you can hear here, it like just keeps glitching out the last sound that it was playing. So if you do it while it's playing music, it sounds like this until you stop, which is pretty annoying. 
you can do a quick save state. You can resume it. So that's it for the video. Hopefully you found these instructions easy enough to follow along to. Let me know in the comments if you had any trouble. And I'm excited to hear what games you're looking forward to playing on your 3DS. You can subscribe to this channel for more content or check out my website at catskull.net. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.